New Zealand native and travel writer Claire Nelson has always loved the outdoors. We spend a lot of time outside because that's what you do in New Zealand. We're just outside a lot. We were in the water a lot. This past May, Claire was house sitting for friends near Joshua Tree National Park and jumped at the chance to explore the parks and numerous trails. You get some incredible, almost you know, magical looking boulder stacks and you get different views, you get a uh, different perspective. But it's, it's just a sense of that you are somewhere quite removed from your everyday life. On May 22nd, Claire set out on her biggest hike, the Lost Palms Oasis Trail. I remember feeling really content. I remember just thinking, ah, you know, I'm so happy to be here and I'm so lucky to be here. Roughly two miles into her journey, something went horribly wrong. And so I was testing my footing and was pressing into the rock going, okay, I think there are a couple of tiny little footholds that I can use here. But as soon as I put any more weight onto my right foot, I started to slip. Claire fell nearly 15 feet to the ground, shattering her pelvis, spraining her ankle and breaking her foot, almost completely immobile. She tried calling for help. I reached for my bag to grab my phone and um, dialed 911 and just kept getting no signal, no signal, no signal. Oh, Stranded and alone, Claire documented her survival. You know, someone gonna come looking for me. I might die here and I'm really scared that that's the case. I just think of all of you guys, my friends and my family, and I would do anything to see you guys. After several days and no signs of help, Claire's supplies were running low, forcing her to get drastic. I had this bottle full of liquid and I just thought, well, okay, I'm going to have to start drinking urine. As the days passed, Claire wasn't sure she'd make it. Oh, man. I felt completely alone. I think that was the point where I'd started to give up, or at least felt like it was a struggle to keep going. And we're glad she didn't give up. Claire Nelson joins us now. What is it like to even see that story? You know what? I still feel like I'm watching somebody else. I still feel quite detached from it. Um, it's quite weird to think that I went through that and then I'm sitting here right now mm. talking about it. It's, it's, yeah, I think I've still got a bit of processing to do. You know, you, you made the decision to record this ordeal. Um, what was your motivation for that? Was it, was it to leave a record where you, I mean, I, I'm just, I, I'm trying to put myself in this situation. I'm, I'm not sure if I, I could have done that. Mm. It's funny. It, it was just something that came to me. I was, I spent quite a long time with my phone in my hand trying to get through, to get some signal or something. And when I realized that that was completely futile, it just came to me of, okay, well, you know, record something, just leave a message for, for my family so that if, if, you know, anybody found it, they know what happens. Um, and, and from there I realized that I, well, I have a camera and actually that's a better use of, of the battery mm. and started to leave more updates. Okay. So what did you have? You had that walking stick. I had this walking stick, um, which I, my, it's my friend's walking stick. And, uh, they let, you know, when, when they were saying goodbye and I uh, was looking after their house, he said, you should take the stick when you go hiking. And I thought, yeah, okay. I mean, he was really proud of this thing. And uh, I got in the car without it and I was about to pull out of the driveway that day and just something came to me and I thought, you know what, I think I'll take it. And I stopped the car, went back in the house. Wow. Just It was in the door. I just reached in the door and grabbed it. And if I hadn't done that, I don't know if I'd be sitting here right now. What, how did you end up using the stick? Well, it was, you know, my only, the only thing I had that I could use to reach everything else around me. And, um, oh, because you couldn't move. I couldn't move. I, was, I, I couldn't even so much as sit up. Mm. Um, so I, the, the, the greatest thing I used it for was I created a sunshade with that. So I, I grabbed another stick and I took my hairband out, made like a, a cross shape, and then I had a grocery bag with me. Oh, I'm looking oh, wow. at it so now. So it's like an umbrella. That. Yeah, yeah, Where exactly. did you get the wits to know how to do that? <laughs> I have no idea. Seriously. Wow. It, back home, we call it uh, Kiwi ingenuity. It's just <laughs> kind of, you, you just use what's around you. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, all I knew at the time was that the heat was so intense, I just, I had to get it off my face. You, you're out in the wilderness. You're there four days, three nights. Mm -hmm. what, I mean, at night, I would think that would probably be even more frightening in a sense because you can't see anything, but I'm sure you can hear stuff oh. around you. Well, you know, it was t the first night was absolutely terrifying, especially, in fact, when it, the sun started to go down and, and the realization that I was going to be out there at night at, mm -hmm. and you know you're already vulnerable enough being stuck on your back but when you can't see anything 
Um, I, I lay awake the whole night, just convinced I was seeing snakes everywhere, and then I'd shine my torch oh and my realize, no, there's nothing there. So how did you end up getting rescued, Claire? Um, amazingly, my friends uh, noticed that I had been quiet on social media, and they know when I'm traveling that I, I do post a lot. So that was the first signal that something wasn't right. So my friends overseas at this point um, got some friends to go and check on me at the house. I realized the car wasn't there. They found the piece of paper. I'd written out the, my plan of which hikes I was going to do what day and, uh, and realized that I was planning to do the Los Palms Oasis hike on the Tuesday. So they realized I'd been out there four days and they called the emergency services mm. straight away. And they didn't see you at first once they got out there. No. So the Riverside um, County Sheriff Aviation um, guys got out there with the helicopter and I was drifting in and out of consciousness at this point. So I, had, I couldn't even hold up my sunshade and I was just, I had it draped over me. So um, I, I just heard this voice that kind of snapped me back into consciousness, which was, we're looking for a missing hiker. Like, and and I, I thought, oh, my gosh, uh, you know, they might be looking for me. And then I couldn't see the helicopter. I could just hear it. And when yeah. did you realize you were going to be OK? Um, they, they came around twice. Then they disappeared again. And each time I thought... Must have been agonizing. It's just the silence was deafening. The third time they came back round, and I waved this, I put my hat on top of my sun umbrella and I was waving it, and I hear this voice say, We see you, we're going to come and get you. And I just, just collapsed in this moment of complete relief. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're happy you're here. Thank you. And sharing your story. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll be right back.